Oh, chromium. Wow, who would have thought it would come down to chromium? Uh, it's another one of the transition metals, but you know, strangely in its trivalent form, it's actually essential to our diet as a trace element. But the hexavalent form, well, that's deadly. Oh, but for a metal, sure makes for a nice finish. Chrome, copper, brass, nickel, zinc, tin, silver and gold. Objects made from these metals seem to be everywhere. But in most cases, the metal on the outside of these items is just that, only on the very outside. It's put there by electroplaters like us. Hi, I'm Rob Legg from Precision Plating and I'm going to show you how. Electroplating or coating an item with a thin layer of metal involves dipping an object that can conduct electricity into a solution that has dissolved metal in it and passing an electrical current through both of them. The current causes the object to become negatively charged while the metal ions in the solution are positively charged so they're attracted to each other and the metal deposits on the object. But why put a layer of metal on an object at all? What is the point of electroplating? Well, it can give an item a desired property, like resistance to abrasion, protection against corrosion, or a certain visually attractive finish. So what sort of objects can we coat? Those made from a large range of metals and a few types of plastics, but because everything we dip into solution must be able to conduct electricity, plastic items must first undergo pretreatment before their surface will carry a current. To pre-treat plastic parts, we first have to process them through four different solutions. Each of these solutions will treat the surface in a different way without the use of electricity. The first solution is acidic. It etches the plastic so the layers we add on top afterwards will bind to it properly. The second and third solutions give the plastic parts an even coating of atoms of a metal palladium. And these allow the final pre-treatment layer of electroless nickel to grow on top. The metal coated plastic parts can now conduct electricity and be electroplated in the same way as metal parts. Now electroplating itself isn't a one step process either, as most metal finishes require other metals as undercoats. For example, to achieve a chrome finish on a part, you first need to coat it with copper and then nickel. The copper layer makes the surface bright and level, and the nickel protects the copper and provides corrosion resistance. The same undercoats are required for parts with gold and silver finishes, so we add them more often than not. With all overcoat metals having bright and satin variations, and some having colour variations too, the range of finishes an electroplated product can have is huge. They're used in bathrooms, kitchens and sheds, offices, shops and art galleries and on planes, trains, boats and cars. Now you know a bit about how electroplated items are made, you'll probably start seeing them everywhere you look.